In verse 3, he's saying, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Now, I'm so glad that this is included here because there is a danger even with Christians, even in the church, to be misled by so-called scientific evidence to, say, to believe in an evolutionary process. And people say God could not have made uh, everything in six days and rested on the seventh. I'm sorry, I believe it literally. I believe that's what happened. And I think that's uh, the origin of the days of the week. Uh, the six working days and the day of rest on the Sabbath day. And it says, rest on the Sabbath day as God rested. So to me, part of my faith is in believing that God created everything. But it's very interesting when it says in verse 3, th uh, verse three through faith we understand that worlds were framed by the word of God. Now, this to me is quite interesting because I'm studying something else and um, actually dealing with something else in some of my ministry, which is the ability to work miracles and see the impossible, where if you read, it's in Mark 11 and I think repeated in Luke 11, on the Mount of Olives where Jesus cursed the fig tree because it had no fruit. And coming back the next morning, Peter is absolutely amazed and says, Master, what's happened? The tree is dead. <laughs> I'm a little bit surprised at Peter that he didn't really expect this to happen, but he didn't. And uh, the reply of Jesus was very, very simple, where he says that if you speak to this mountain, they were on the Mount of Olives, and command this mountain to be cast into the sea, that would have been the Dead Sea, it will happen if in your heart you believe that what you say will happen. Now, that's very powerful, and um, for me, it's something that I'm trying to live on experimentally. But here, strangely enough, and it's the first time I've actually, I suppose it's because I've just been preaching on the other side, that I understand um, the third verse in a slightly different way. Because what he's saying is that through our faith today, we understand that the world's were framed by the word of God, the spoken word. It's as if here that Paul is saying that creation came when God spoke. Now, that's powerful. It also links to something else because we know that Jesus is referred to as the word of God. The Bible is referred to as the Word of God, but Jesus is also referred, and we also know from Colossians that in Jesus all things are held together. That is a vast subject. But let me just simply come back to the origin of this, which is that through faith we accept that everything was created by God by his power. Now, I think that it's my underlying very strong faith in creation that means that I can accept with God that nothing is impossible. The things that are, the Bible says the things that are impossible with men are possible with God. And I think this here is the evidence we believe that if God could create everything, not only man and uh, not only the animals and everything, but not only our world, but everything in space. So we come on to verse 4, where Paul says, and by the way, I remind you that Paul is speaking to the Jewish people, the Hebrew people. He says in verse 4, by faith... 
Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying by his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaks. Now, this is a great reminder that Abel and Cain both made offerings and sacrifices to God, but only Abel offered the blood sacrifice. Cain didn't. And in God's sight, it was only the blood sacrifice that would atone for sin. And Cain killed his brother because of it. But Abel actually became a witness of this tremendous witness by which he obtained righteousness by the very fact of his death. Uh, he was righteous, God testifying of it, and by it, he being dead, yet speaks. Then you come to verse 5, because in verse 5, faith translated Enoch. Uh, you know, it's quite a tremendous experience. I, I don't very often preach on Enoch, but uh, in, in my middle years, I used to think an enormous about, about Enoch. Because Enoch was a remarkable man because it says that he walked with God. And basically, the Bible says that he walked so close in fellowship to God, uh, in walking and talking together, that there came a time when eventually God says, it's better for you to come into heaven than go back to earth. You're nearer heaven than earth. Come up here, come with me. Now, that's a, a phenomenal experience. It's the only person it ever happened to. But it is a, a very wonderful and very clear picture of how in our walk with God, in our fellowship with God, we can get so close to him. I know that worship is, is a, means a great deal. I love worship, uh, and worship is very important. But somehow there is something even deeper than worship, and it's the moment when we're walking and talking with the Lord. Uh, there was um, a wonderful song when I was growing up, which I'm always reminded of, and it simply, we come to the gar I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses, and he walks with me and he talks with me and tells me I am his own, and the joy that we share, none other can ever know. So. That song, that's composed first as a poem, is a reference to this. It's walking with God in the kind of fellowship where you have a constant relationship with him. And also, I would remind you, and I know this personally, that there are times if you walk with someone who's very close to you, husband and wife or parents with children, people that are close to you, there are times when you talk, and there are times when you don't talk. And it is said one of the marks of friendship is that you can spend time with someone without talking. <laughs> Might sound very strange, but that is what is said. And here, it's, it's just so much that you can fellowship with the Lord and feel the Lord close to you, not just we're talking. So Enoch found favor with God because he was translated into heaven. It says translation, he didn't die in the normal way. And before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. So what I've been talking about, that relationship with God, that walking, that talking with him, pleases God to the extent that now then here you are is the challenge if you can walk close enough for the Lord maybe even you could be translated like Enoch <laughs> 